be will you be washed in the blood will you be delivered and be saved will you come to him and seek his hope will you come to him and have freedom there is power power wonder walking power in the blood of the lamb there is power power walking wonder power in the precious blood of the lamb there is wonder there is power in the blood of the lamb father we worship you El Shaddai will honor you. King of glory We give you the adoration. We give you everything that you deserve. We thank you, Lord, because you are God and there is none like you. We thank you, Lord, because you woke up us safely this morning. It is not by power nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. We thank you, Lord, because you are God that answereth prayers. Because you answer prayers, that is why all flesh shall come unto you. We thank you, Lord, because the joy and the peace that we experience when we come unto you is unspeakable. We thank you, Lord, because you've proved yourself that they that seek me shall find me. Lord, these are difficult times. These moments are difficult. But, Lord, you want to give us hope. You want to give us peace. You want to give us joy. You are God of peace. So, Lord, as we listen to your word this morning, Father, we pray, Lord, that your word will minister grace unto the hearers. You have told me over and over again that God will do it again. We are in a state of hopelessness. We are in a state of dejection. We are in a state that some people wake up to say, is this life worth living? So, Lord, you know the people that you are speaking to this morning by this message. You are speaking to me. You are speaking to every one of us, Lord. Father, let your word be fruitful. Let your word materialize. Let your word break asunder all the fiery darts of the enemies in our lives. Your word says to wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities against the forces of darkness, forces we cannot see. So, Lord, we want to just decree your power, decree your anointing, Lord, to go and fight our battle for us. Because we cannot do it alone. Because the arm of flesh will fail us. But you are the only one that does not fail. So, Lord, we exalt you. We give you the glory. We give you the adoration. Thank you, Lord, because you are God. Thank you, Lord, because there is none like you. Thank you, Lord, because you are the creator of this universe. Thank you, Lord, because everything you made about this universe is perfect, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the purpose for which you make prayer. You said, if my people who are called by my name shall call upon me, I will answer. We thank you, Lord, because you are God that answereth prayer. Because you answer prayers, that is why we all come unto you, Lord. Father, we just pray that you wake us, all of us, up from our slumber. Because many problems of this life that you carry the burden we carry is because we do not take it to you in prayer lord as we take them to you in prayer give us hope lord as we talk as you minister to us about hopelessness lord let us realize that we are hopeful because you said that wherever the soul of your feet shall tread upon that you are giving unto us as you are with moses you told Joshua, Joshua, fear not. Lord, let the joy of the Lord be a portion today in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for hopelessness in the lives of people that are listening to me. Lord, bring hope. Those that are depressed that are listening to me because you made this program for those individuals, for myself, for everyone that is listening, Lord. Father, we pray that your word, Lord, will minister deliverance, will minister grace. That, Lord, at the end of this podcast, we will be joyful. We say, yes, Lord, you have touched our hearts. We say, yes, Lord, we have made you as our foundation. Lord, we just bless you 
We just worship your holy name. For we have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 I want to thank those of you who are able to listen to our podcast this morning. I was meditating within my heart yesterday. I said, Lord, what do you want for your people? What do you want for us to listen to as these are difficult moments? And the Lord says, I should talk about hopelessness. I say, Lord, hopelessness. And the Lord says, the caption will be, God will do it again. I searched and searched, and I was reading, I was doing everything until about half past one this morning. And the Lord just impressed it upon my heart because I know you are listening to me. It looks as if everything is hopeless. God is saying there is hope. Because when you look at what is going on, it's enough for all of us to be despondent, to be discouraged. And we are going to look at it from the definition, from the English definition. Then we look at the scripture. Hopelessness is defined as total loss of hope or state of despair or lack of hope. Having no expectation of good or success. To be despair means to be left alone, not susceptible to remedy or cure, and is a hopeless state for anybody to be. I remember one day when I was just entering the foyer of our church in Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada, I met a lady and the Lord just prompted me to say, yes, I wish you a blessed day. This lady said, you don't know what I'm going through. There is no blessing in this day. And she was there in the church and I pronounced the word of God. I said, listen, God is going to minister grace. God is going to minister hope into your life. And behold, that day she came out of the altar, she was slain in the spirit, and she gave a big testimony. I want to tell you this morning, it is not, it's not just, you are not just listening to this message because you want to listen to it. You are listening to it because God wants to remove that hopelessness in your life. There is none of us who, does, who doesn't go through that state. I want to reassure you. Don't think, oh, is it because I'm not as strong as he is? No. It's because God wants to manifest his plan and purpose in your life. You see, having no expectation of good or success, to be hopeless, to be alone. And when people look at their state, some people say, oh, my state is hopeless. But what God is saying that your state is hopeful. God that you serve is God that I'm pronouncing the word of deliverance, the word of hope as you listen to me. The expression of helplessness or hopelessness in conjunction with mental, with a mental disorder, such as depression, represents a very dangerous warning. And we need to actually take it seriously. What is hopelessness? It is a feeling that something, your condition will never change. But God says your condition will change. I can say that with boldness in my heart. Because he says the thoughts I have for you in the book of Jeremiah 29, 11, they are thoughts of good and hopeful end. They are not of evil to bring you what? An expected end. Most people who feel hopeless, they have depression. And unrelated depression is the number one cause for suicide. When you look at it, you say, oh, why is it that I am the only one that is going through this? You are not the only one that is going through it. Others are going through it. Some people are able to express their depression and their hopelessness. Some people, by the time they express this, it is too late. And what happens is they take their lives. Some people, when you look at it, you think it is a disease for a Christian to be depressed. No! It is not. Because when you look at the scriptures, when you look at the book of Elijah, God may have a lesson to teach you and I when we go through those depressive moments. 
God will have a purpose to teach you. That is why I don't think when you are depressed, it's always from the devil. Because when we experience certain adverse situations, we always blame the devil. It may be that God wants you and I to look at certain things in our lives, to look at certain things that we can change. Because when you look at the life of Elijah, the man of God, Elijah who will go to the presence of God and God will talk to him, Elijah was depressed. He thought he was going to be murdered. He thought he was going to be killed by, a by Ahab and Jeze Je Jezebel. He thought, oh, everything was ending, that they have killed all the prophets of God, that I was the only one. Oh, no. Many a times when you think you are the only one in that situation, remember that what God is telling you is you are not the only one. There are millions of Christians, I can tell you, that they have depression. They have hopelessness. And they think, what am I going to do? They say, what is the essence of life? There are some that they are children of God, they have committed suicide. It is not what people want to talk about when you listen to messages or sermons on Sunday. People don't want to talk about it. They say, so you can't put on the brave face. Yes, but what the Lord is saying that, what the enemy is suggesting, saying that things will never get better. That's the way they start. There are no solutions to my problems. So many things. I will never be happy again. I will never get what I wanted. I don't see things ever improving. There is no point in trying anymore. I just want to give up. These are the words the enemy suggests. They say things are hopeless. I feel so hopeless. There is no hope for me. What do I have to look forward to? The future is empty for me. Some people look at their future is empty. You've been trying to get pregnant. You've been trying to have a baby. You think all is gone. But I'm telling you, by the grace of God, as a prophet of God, I am depositing that word into your life that your life will not be empty. Your life will not be hopeless. Because if God could do it for Sarah in her old age, that same God that you serve is the God that can do it for you. We see a lot of men go through depression. Women also go through depression. But what happens is that women are able to express their mind. Men, because of their maleness nature, they try to just say, well, all is well. I want to tell you, Elijah was a man, not a woman. Elijah was depressed. He found himself in a cave. But from the story of Elijah, God met him in his area of need. Some of us, when we are depressed, when we are hopeless, we say, what do I have to look forward to? Some people wake up in the morning, they don't look at the day as bright. They don't look at such a beautiful sunny day that we are having in the Genesis Saskatchewan today. Yesterday was cloudy. Think about that. Yesterday was cloudy. If you say, well, what a dreadful day, uh, there's nothing to look for, and you kill yourself yesterday, and you are not alive today with such a beautiful day, such a bright day. That is what God does. I want to implode you. I want to admonish you that think of what the Lord says. He said, the thoughts I have for you, they are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you an expected end. What happens when people are hopeless? They say the future is empty for me. They look at themselves. You are listening to me. You are a single parent, no husband. I'm just talking to you that the Lord God of Abraham will meet you in your area of need. Because God loves each and every one of us, the problem is when we look at our situation, we become hopeless. What, we, what does the enemy suggest to you? I only see things getting worse in the future. Everything is going down here. What the enemy wants you to do is to focus at your problem. It's not to focus at the solution, not to look at any hope. Everything is going down here. I will never get back to the way I was. Some people, they look back. When you look at the book of Psalm, David was talking about the children of Israel, the miracles that the Lord did, the Lord performed in the desert. With mighty hands, God set them free. And David was saying, where are the miracles? Where are those things that you did for our fathers? You think David was in a good mood at that time? David was going through a deep depression. 
Because you could not see the power of God, and you are listening to me, you say, I cannot see the power of God. God is going to minister to you. God that I serve, God that I know liveth, God that is my Father, God that I commune with on a daily basis, I decree by the name of the Almighty that that God will change your situation, and you will give testimony. You will give testimony because God that I serve, God that I know in and out, is God that speaks to his people. He comes to you when you feel hopeless, when you think everything is down, nobody is on my side. There is nothing that I can do to make things better. Some people think, oh, I have tried everything. Let me tell you, when all hope is lost, that is when God starts to move. That is when God starts to move mightily in your life. If you remember the story of Job, when everything, his friends deserted him, the wife told him that, what God, God, God are you serving? Why not deny him and just have your peace? I want to tell you that God that I serve, God that I know is unchanging. Even when you have headache, even when you have heartache, even when your heart is palpitating, when you think your, your mouth is dry, because these are signs of when you feel everything is lost, the Lord that I serve, the Lord that never fails, the Lord that parted rescue into two, the Lord that made the children of Israel to walk over River Jordan, I am praying for that God to change your situation. That God is going to change your situation because the Bible talks so much about depression. When you look at it, depression is a disease. And let me tell you, if you think that, oh, because you are a Christian, you cannot have any affliction or anything, you are making a big mistake. God can let things afflict you so that you will know his sufficiency. You remember the story of brother Paul. Paul, in the Acts of Apostles chapter 9, the Bible says he obtained permission so that he could go and arrest Christians in Damascus. But on this way, God reveals himself to him. God reveals himself. God called him. He said, Paul, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? You may not know him as you are listening to me, but God is going to minister to you. Just as Saul wasn't seeking for God, it was God that sought him. And God is going to seek you in your difficult moment. God is going to minister to you in your hopelessness. You are depressed. Some of you, you are an antidepressant. He said, I cannot just do it in a day without having to increase my antidepressant. And your psychiatrist, they've tried everything. I'm praying, Lord, that, Lord, you will heal such heart. You will heal such mind, Lord, because you are our healer, because of your precious blood that was shed on Calvary, Lord, because you said it is finished. You finished the work of redemption on Calvary. I pray, Lord, that you will heal such heart. What does the Bible say about hopelessness? When the righteous cry for help, what does the Bible say? The Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. You think as I'm speaking to you, I don't have my difficulty. I don't have my trouble. I do. But even as I was praying this morning, at around 6 o'clock, God woke me up. And when he woke me up, he revealed something to me. He reveals victory to me in my situation. God is going to do the same thing for you. It's not, it's, it, it, it doesn't have generals. It doesn't have major. We are all God's children. It depends on how you make a relationship with him. Your relationship with God, just like you have your earthly father, will determine how far you go with him. And I want to tell you, one thing that the enemy doesn't want you to do is prayer. You see, I love this song. Somebody touch me, somebody touch me, somebody touch my soul. Oh, oh, oh. When I was praying, praying to my father, Somebody touch my soul. One thing the enemy doesn't want you to do is prayer. He wants to take prayer from you, you couples who are listening to me, even for you to be able to wake up in the morning and say, let us pray together. The devil doesn't want to do that. Even you that are not married, you have your kids at home, the devil doesn't want you to pray with those children. John will say, I want to sleep until 10 o'clock. Oh, this is Sunday. I want to tell you that when you call upon me, he said, call upon me and I will answer. He didn't say, uh, he said, call upon me and I will answer. We are going to look at some Bible characters 
for the short time that we are permitted this month because this is going to be in the series this is series part one because the message is titled god will do it again antidote to hopelessness we're going to look at the life of joshua when you open your bibles to joshua chapter one and the bible says after the death of moses the servant of the lord i pray that you my listener you jews you pastors you evangelists you minister of god you will be servant of god because when you're a servant of god god imputes his righteousness god imputes his holiness god imputes everything that is in that is necessary in you when you're a servant of god that wants to do his purpose and his plan you realize that your life is translated i can tell you that for the past 47 years 47 years since i have accepted christ my first year in the university since i've accepted him as my lord and savior i can say that it is no longer i that liveth but christ that liveth in me do i have moments that i don't feel low yes i do do i have moments that i don't feel hopeless that lord what is going to happen yes i know i do but i my anchor is in the lord my strength is in the lord and when you focus your eyes upon the lord god paves the way he's the one that paves the way in the desert he's the one that makes it possible for you when the going is tough for you not to tie a rope around your neck and say you are going to kill yourself because it happened to elijah elijah thought he was dying elijah thought he, there was no hope when you look at people of god they reacted in different situations to hopelessness when you look at moses moses the servant of god moses whom god called moses who was reluctant leader god called him for a purpose god performed so many miracles in his presence god used him for so many things moses went upon the mountain and when the moses came back the children of israel they were impatient you see impatient will make you do certain things that you are not supposed to do and i want to emphasize on this because there are so many so-called preachers so many ministries the only thing you are looking for is m-o-n-e-y money i want to tell you that yes i hear some they post i have just I have just bought my the fourth jet, my third jet. I have uh, 100 congregations. I have 100 churches. I have this. I want to tell you the greatest commission that the Lord has given is go ye. He said, go ye into the world and preach the gospel. And do what? Preach the gospel and make disciples of all nations. If your heart is not focused on that, you have missed the mark. Because if your heart is just focused on things that you can see, not focus on things that are eternal. I'm praying for this COVID-19 just to go away so that in my backyard, in our house, we'll be able to have a tent, we'll be able to have a prayer meeting, even if it's just for one day in a month. People of all denominations should be able to come because I'm not denomination bandit. And just because I know denomination will not save anybody, Methodists will not save you, whether you call yourself charismatic or Pentecostal or whatever denomination you call yourself is not what is going to save you. Who can ever tell me the denomination of Paul? Paul had no denomination. The Bible says in Antioch, that was where Christians were, uh, the, the disciples were first called Christians. Christian is what binds us, Christianity. I don't care about your denomination. About, I don't care whether you are redeemed, whether you are fire, mountain of fire, whether you are Pentecostal, whether you are apostolic, whether you are whatever name you call yourself, whether you are Catholic, whatever name, whether you are Celestial Church, whether you are Caribbean and Seraphim, God does not deal with any of those names. God is only looking for those who, whose hearts are focused on God. I just pray for the for for the, for, for the yard that we have in the back of our house that the Almighty God, the angelic coast, the angelic coast, they stand at the four corners of this yard. That when people come here, they will find joy. When people come here, they will find peace. That it will not just be a place that you want to rejoice; it will be a place where they call the Holy God, Holiness. 
righteousness, deliverance will be seen. When people come, they will be slain in the spirit, and they will know that God he is, and there is none like him. There are so many Bible verses when you look at the scriptures for depression. The Bible is not a dispensary that you come for a daily dose of inspiration. What happens with many of us is that we only come to God when we are in trouble. But I want to tell you, the Bible says, they that seek me, find me. If you only come to God when you are in trouble, then it's going to be difficult because you won't know your voice. But when I speak, the Lord knows my voice because he knows that when there's any problem, I call upon him. I don't look upon my wife. My wife doesn't look upon me. I don't look upon my children. I don't look upon friends. I look unto him. If you look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, you realize you will have peace. The Bible is primarily the grand story of God's plan to redeem a people for his glory. Nevertheless, the Bible talks about depression, which is good news for people like me, like you, who often find themselves engulfed in the darkness. And I repeat it. Ah, uh, the Bible says we are so much encompassed by so great a cloud of witness. Let us lay aside everything in the book of Hebrews that easily beset us. I grew up from a polygamous home. I grew up to make the occultic powers for my father. And I can tell you, I see those occultic powers at work when I wasn't a Christian. But the moment I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior, the battle began between myself and my dad. And it was a big battle. But I can tell you that by the time he died, he could say boldly to me, he said, you are anointed of God. He said it to myself and my wife. He said, despite all the evil powers that have concocted against you, nothing has touched you. I want to tell you, I want to remind you, you are a child of God. You are in a difficult situation, don't give up. Don't think that the unbelievers, you see, when believers testify about the power of God in your life, we call that testimony. But when unbelievers say that they know the power resides in you, that is victory. There are so many of the so-called ministers, what you're only parading about is your congregation. What you're only parading about is the number of beautiful cars. They go to the parking lot of some of you, it looks as if you are just doing a competition. You see the best cars in town, you see this one, they come to your house, it looks as if you're a car dealer. They go to, there are some of you, now it's competition with schools, with universities. I want you to know what kingdom are you building? What church are you building? I, I'm not sure that your, your mind is focused on, on, on heaven. If your mind is focused on heaven, you will talk about salvation. You will talk about deliverance. Because if you are not delivered, if you are not set free, this world will be hopeless. Everything you have, you will leave it. And I'm going to talk to you because this is going to be in a series. I told you this is part one. Everything you have that your hope is in, you will leave it one day. But many of you, you live your life. Many of us will live our lives as if everything ends here. I can tell you that everything does not end here. And how do I know it? Have I been to heaven and come back? No. But because the word of God is real, because I've experienced it personally, that's what I can tell you. And I give you this short testimony. I was in my living room during lunch time in 1099 Waskana Highlands. And I had my lunch. After the lunch, I was just resting for a few minutes. And the Lord just prompted me. I said, Lord, you said my name has been written in the book of life. I said, if that is true, show me the book. I want to tell you that they that know their God shall do exploits. The Bible says, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? The Lord doesn't want to hide anything from you. You are listening to me this morning. The Lord does not want to hide anything from you. And as I was lying there, I saw a big book suspended in front of me. Amos Akindiji Akindi, and the book was closed immediately. I want to tell you that if your name has not been written in the book of life, if you are still living in the flesh, I want you to know that the only joy, the only peace you can have 
is to serve God. The only peace you can have is to make have a relationship with the Father. What you are looking at in terms of, oh, this is glamorous, you are going to leave it one day. You are going to leave it one day. I set an example for you. If you have three vehicles in the family and you are only two of you, there will be some days you start wondering, do I take this car out? Do I take this one out? You'll be confused. And you will see that it doesn't serve or propose certain things that we just glamorize in life. Certain things that we just treasure. And so what probably is making you depressed is because you don't have those riches of this world. That's the way we are going to start this morning. Because you look at what your friends have, you are depressed. Why is it that John or why is it that Teresa, why is it that Shannon is able to have this? The Bible sheds light into dark places. It gives hope to the hopeless and allows the depressed person to have God's perspective rather than own this my view. You see, when you have your own view, you are depressed. When the enemy is attacking, you cannot say, the Bible says, cast all your cares and anxieties on him. I repeat that verse over and over when I feel low. You think I don't feel low? You must be kidding. There are moments I say, Lord, why have you allowed this? I ask God, then the Lord will tell me, my grace is your sufficiency. Just as God told Paul, Paul prayed for God to remove the thorn in his flesh, but the Lord told him that my grace is your sufficiency. You are going to be lifted up by the grace of God by the time we finish this message, because it's going to be in a series. It may be up to three or four parts, because what the Lord has deposited in my heart is so heavy, is so much, that I cannot just complete it in a 35-40 minutes podcast. You see, if you are depressed, you need to watch who you relate with. That is number one. Because there is a proverb which says, knives sharpen knives. If the only person that you relate with, there are people that are going to make you feel so low. Then you say, oh, don't you know the problem we are having? There is a society for depressed people. I want you to know that it will not serve you any good. Because what you need to know is that you serve a mighty God. What you need to know is that the God that you serve, he said, the thoughts I have for you, they are thoughts of good and not of evil. I'm going to repeat that again and again and again in your heart until the Lord cements it into your life. One thing that is really important is you need to get your priorities and perspectives right. You and I, we are strangers. This world is not a home. This world is not my home. I am just passing through. If heaven is not my home, oh Lord, what shall I do? The angels beck on me in an heaven open door. And I cannot feel at home in this world anymore. You see, I want to tell you this is not your home. There are many people that are building their paradise here. They be and they call themselves ministers. They call them pastors of God. Where is the plan of God in your life? Where is the plan? Your hopelessness that you are feeling is maybe because your heart are focused on things that you can see. Some Christian circles, the moment you change your thinking, your feelings will also change. That as you read these Bible verses for depression, God is going to minister to you. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 8. You can write it down. You can listen to it again. I'll give you some verses, some Bible verses. Isaiah 41, 10. Psalm 41 to 3. Psalm 3, verse 3. Psalm 34, verses 18 to 19. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Isaiah 42, verse 3. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Romans 8, 38 to 39. Psalm 34, verse 17, Psalm 42, verse 11, and lastly, 2 Corinthians 1, 3 to 4. And I want you to know, the Bible says in the book of Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The Bible says no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. 
You think your situation is different. Your situation is so bad. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. As that 40, 31 that I just quoted, he said, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Lord, I just pray for those that are listening to me that, Lord, you will uplift them. Lord, that you upload your word into their lives, that they will wait upon you, Lord. Wait upon the Lord. Ron Connelly sang a very popular song, Wait Upon the Lord. If you wait upon the Lord, no matter how tough it is, and you read the word of God, and you go down on your knees, and you associate with people that will lift your spirit, not that people that will pull you down. There are some people, they are called themselves Christians, you don't want to be in their midst. Because the only thing that they look at is negative, negative thing. The Bible says in Luke 137, for nothing will be impossible with God. He says, 1 John 1, 9, if you confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's only God that cleanses us. It's only God that has the antiseptic solution to kill all the viruses. It's only God that has the soap that will wash our dirt away. Because nothing can wash our sins away, only the blood of Jesus. Who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth of the word of God? First Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. God wants you and I to be saved. He, he, he has no generals, he has no majors. I've repeated that to you. We are all washed, we are all saved by grace. And the only thing is that you need to come unto him. He says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And it is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. You know, the greatest obstacle the enemy wants to put in your life is fear. When you are afraid, he says, fear not, fall with you. Be not dismayed from your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And before we end up in prayer. I want you to look at James chapter 5, verse 13. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. You see, if you learn to call upon the Lord, if you learn to sing, if you learn to call upon that God, God that never fails, He will minister to you in your difficult situation. And lastly, do not be conformed to this world. Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. You see, so many of our ministers, so many of us Christians, so many of the pastors, so many of the Bible leaders, so many people that call themselves children of God, when they fall into sin, it can be depressing. And some of them, they do that. I know some, they drink. Some, even you say, oh, you are a child of God, why are you smoking? Some, they commit adultery, fornication. It's because of hopelessness. They just think that they have satisfaction and peace in that. But I can assure you this morning, God will do it. The antidote to hopelessness is holding steadfast. Because the steadfastness of the Lord never ceases. His mercies endure forever. Great is the faithfulness of the Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord, for those who have listened this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your steadfastness. Thank you, Lord, because you are God that leads us in our hopelessness. So, Lord, I just pray because of your anointing, because of the power that is in your word, Lord, that you will minister to those who have listened this morning, Lord, and those who are here to listen, Lord, who will listen to this message later on. Lord, you said, God will do it again. God will do it again. That is the antidote for our hopelessness. Lord, in our hopeless situation, Lord, when we feel low, when we feel depressed, Lord, Father, 
let your grace be a sufficiency. Let us learn to cast our cares and anxieties on you because you care so much about us, Lord. Father, we remember millions of people worldwide who are in need. Because those of us who are not in need, we cannot just forget them because you say we should be intercessors, Lord. Father, I just pray, Lord, that the window of heaven, Lord, we break open for the needs of your people, Lord. Father, I just pray, Lord, that heaven will break open, Lord. That, Lord, abundance of blessings will be upon your children in Jesus' name. Everlasting, Father, those there are some that are in hospitals now, they are sick with one infirmity or another because of your healing power, Lord. Because you are our healer. Lord, I pray, Lord, that your healing virtue, Lord, will fall upon that woman with an abdominal tumor. Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you will touch her, Lord, and heal her, Lord. Lord, that cancer, that tumor, Lord, will go. I pray, Lord, for your healing power, Lord. Yes, you say you've been having headache. The headache is persistent for the past 15 days. So, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that that headache, Lord, you will touch that head, Lord, and heal that head, Lord. Everlasting Father, yes, you are. I can see you. you. In your place of work, there is so much untruthfulness. In your place of work, there is so much, you just feel like not going to work tomorrow because things are so bad there. So, Lord, your word says, in the way of a man pleaseth you, you even make his enemies to be his friend. So, Lord, I decree, as your child, Lord, steps into that place of work, that the joy, that the peace, that, Lord, the power of the Almighty, Lord, will translate everything, Lord. Everlasting Father, yes, I know you are hearing me. You are a minister of God. And these are not the way it should be. And you know that it is tough, especially this period. You depend only on what comes from the ministry for your maintenance. Father, we pray, Lord, that you will minister. You will provide. Because you are El Shaddai. You are the I am that I am. Lord, we thank you. We just glorify your name. We thank you, Lord, because as many as are called by your name, you call them the children of God. As many that come unto you, you accept them, Lord, because you are God that ministers to us in a state of hopelessness. Lord, we just honor you. We give it the glory. Father, we look at the week ahead. We do not know what it holds, but you can face tomorrow because you are God of tomorrow. So, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that the week ahead, Lord, it will be a glorious week, Lord. And, Lord, your children who have heard this word, that they will be able to spread your news, your, the word of the living God, unto others, Lord. Father, Lord, you have encouraged us. You have admonished us. You said, fear not, just as you told Joshua, Lord, let you say, perfect love casteth away all fears, Lord. Father, Lord, let the love of God, Lord, be transparent in our hearts, Lord. Everlasting Father, because you are God and there is none like you, your testimony and your word is what we are living by. So, Lord, we we'll honor you. We give you the glory. We give you all the adoration. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. Thank you, Lord, because you are a sustainer. Thank you, Lord, because there is no other name that we can be saved except the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name. We exalt you. Give us grace, Lord, to minister your word unto others, people that we meet, Lord, so that they will know that you are God and that there is none like you. Father, we honor your holy name. We give you the glory. Yes, the sword of the Spirit, yes, that you are showing me that you are giving us that sword. The sword that you are giving unto us, Lord, Father, Lord, that is the word of the Lord. Father, let that word generate. Let that word go and destroy all the works and the devices of the enemy, Lord. Father, we just worship you. We give you the glory. We give you the adoration. For we have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Amen.